Hey guys, what's going on? Today I'm going to show you how to mark up any song uh, you may be using for a motion graphic design project or an intro or anything in After Effects so that you map out all the beats really easily, really quick, uh, really low effort, and it's uh, just a great way to make sure that your animations sync up with your, um, with your audio and really create that seamless feel in whatever project you're working on. So really quick, really easy. I do a lot of explanation as always, but this stuff is, I believe, the most important part of making an intro and stuff. So uh, hopefully you enjoy this one. Today, uh, as seen by the little intro segment, I'm gonna show you how to easily mark up any sort of song that you're using in a motion graphic design project or intro or anything like that um, to be able to easily find the beats without any issue. I know some songs you can't see it in the waveform. This is a great alternative to that. Um, so you can easily find where the beats of the song are, where other musical cues are, so that you can match up your animation to it. Um, I, this is great. I use it all the time. I don't see a lot of other people doing this. Um, so I just want to kind of make a quick tutorial on it, maybe help a few of you out. Um, and hey, if you find this useful, um, sharing some love on this video would be much appreciated. But anyways, without any further ado, I've got this song here. It's a cool song by uh, No Copyright Sounds that just came out. I like it. Um, but anyways, I chose this song because it's a little bit harder to see where the beats are. Um, and I thought it would be a good song to uh, give an example of how I, how I find the beats and, and music and stuff using After Effects. So anyways, I'm just going to drag it into my um, project right here. I'm not going to worry about setting up a proper composition because I'm just using the music. I don't need anything. See, it's like a weird shape. I don't know. I don't care. Um, anyways, I just dragged in my music here. Um, and I'm going to press L twice to bring up the waveform. As you can see, it's rather... I mean, you can see a little bit. Maybe I was a little bit wrong. You, you can see a little bit where the beats are. I can tell that this is the drop right here. Yeah, so that's the drop right there. Um, and you can tell a little bit where the beats are, but let's just pretend you can't at all, because I know there are some songs out there that really you just can't tell from the waveform. Um, and it's a disaster, and many people just lose their crap. They're like, what's going on? I don't know where the beat is. Um, so anyways, usually uh, what I do and what many others do is, is they press the asterisk key on their keyboard uh, to make a new marker. I believe you can also right click. Can you create a new marker from here? Um, I'm actually not sure. Anyways, just use the asterisk, uh, the little star. It's above the eight if you hold shift and then press eight. Um, but I like to use the one on the number pad because it just creates an unlabeled one on the selected layer instead of the one on uh, creating one on the composition itself. Um, oops, what am I doing? Sh uh, shift eight. Yeah, shift eight puts it on the composition. Um, but if you have a number pad, the asterisk on that side of the keyboard will place one on the currently selected layer um, at the uh, current time. So that is exactly what I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to be placing each one of these markers on a beat. So that way, when I'm going through and animating, I don't have to stop and play back the song and find it in the middle of me trying to animate. That's just taking a step in the wrong direction. All the beats should be laid out before I start any animation work. So that way I can easily see where they are and match up my animation to the beats. Um, it's very important to have your audio and music match when creating motion design projects because without that synchronization, um, it just, you're missing so much. And yeah, I th this is the most important part, I believe. Um, anyways, what I like to do is I like to create a new null object. You can go up here to um, layer, layer new null object and do it that way. I just like to use control, uh, control shift uh, y that'll create a new 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 null object in the currently selected composition. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to name this by pressing Enter on it. Uh, beats, or actually main beats, because I like to map out different uh, musical cues to different nulls. So if I have uh, what I like to call releases, those are usually hi hats or uh, kind of release hits, and then I also like to do like a like a uh, a null object for um, secondary beats. 
and this is uh, secondary beats is a little bit more rare. It depends on the song. If there are like da 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 boom da 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 boom, you know, I like to do the secondary beats that are the smaller beats and the main beats on the higher like more heavy beats. Uh, that's a little bit technical. Anyways, I'm just gonna create these two, the main beats and the releases. Those are the only two you'll really need in every single project. And the rest you can just create per song. If you hear something different in the current song you're uh, using, you can go ahead and name this like words, like uh, mark one out for at the start of each new word that if, if the song is vocal, stuff like that. Uh, make sure you map out not just the beats, but all the elements because it's important to sync to everything, not just the beats. Um, that's when you start to get up to that upper tier of being able to really understand your music and sync to it. Um, anyways, I'm just going to start off with this uh, tip. I know I spent a lot of time talking, but I, f I feel like it's important to explain this stuff. Um, anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and this is the important part. Up here in the preview panel, uh, I usually like to go to a window and then a preview if it's not shown. Um, but my panel is open already, so I set my frame rate. Um, the frame rate of my composition is 60, but I set my playback frame rate to 15. So that way I, I'm playing at 15 out of the 60 frames per second, so it plays back really slow. Um, and that way, when you hide all of the uh, visual layers and just have the audio, um, it won't take any time to RAM preview, and when you press 0 on your keyboard, it plays back super slow and it makes it really, really easy to nail those beats. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do and select my main beats layer and I'm gonna press um, asterisk on my number pad to go ahead and drop a marker right there because I know that's where the first beat is. And this way I can just keep going and pressing zero on my number pad. And actually, I don't know why, but my playhead isn't moving. I don't know why, but my playhead is actually not moving when I press zero on my number pad. Usually it, it tracks along with the music, um, but I guess if yours doesn't do that, you can just keep moving forward using page up and page down, uh, holding shift to go 10 at a time, and just really kind of find it. So it was back, right around there, a little bit back, so you can hear it right there. And it's really easy to go ahead and go in and pinpoint exactly where it is. And from this, you can kind of see the about how long between each beat is, and you can start to kind of like nail it without having to preview. Uh, notice if you press the period or the decimal on your number pad, it will play back at full speed because it doesn't really respect the the changes we've made in the preview panel up here. So a good way to switch between these two speeds is to both use the, the decimal key and the zero key on your number pad to go back and forth between those two playback speeds. So regular speed using the decimal key, slow speed using the zero on your number pad. So right there. And using this, you can just go through and really just nail it. A little bit back. It should be. It should be. You should hear the beat as soon as you press uh, zero and it starts playing. That means you're like right on top of it. And you can just go through and do a whole bunch of these. I just want to show you a release. Right there. That would be a release where kind of, pew, kind of like a power down as opposed to a power up on the beat where it's like boom, 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 like a power down, and that's how you know it's a release. Right there, and I'm gonna go to the release layer and press uh, the asterisk uh, on my number pad to go ahead and place a marker there. And that way you can go through and do it for the whole duration of how long your project is gonna last and just mark out all those beats. So that way when you're going through and let's say you're animating, oh gosh, like uh, an opacity bump on each marker, you can just literally hold shift, snap your playhead to where the marker is, go ahead and do your animation, and you can just copy paste from there any of your relevant keyframes and line them up with where you have the markers, because where you have the markers is exactly where you have the beats, and you know that for a fact because you spent time actually going through and marking them out before starting. So there you go. That is a quick and dirty tutorial with a fair bit of explanation, so it's probably going to be like 10 minutes still. But hey, I always like to say, more explanation is better, even if it takes like twice as long to explain something. 
uh, make sure you fully understand what the hell you're doing is worth it. Um, but anyways, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, um, a like would be appreciated. Share it with your mates. Um, if you know someone that would probably benefit from watching this tutorial, go ahead and share it with them. Sharing is caring. And other than that, uh, if you're looking for an intro or an outro or anything like that, you can head over to my website and uh, you can choose from one of the pre-made designs we have on there. And if you like something, you can order it. Everything is less than $10 and we will edit, render, and send it to you via email within 30 minutes of your order. So if you don't have After Effects, that's a great way to get professional graphics. And if you know someone that doesn't have After Effects and is looking for intros and stuff, you can go ahead and share our website with them. Mucho apreciado. Thank you. Um, yep, other than that, I will see you in the next tutorial. As always, take it easy and have a nice day. Peace.